each one of the esteemed gentlemen back here, including the pastor, has said a little bit about what something has God given me, but it wasn't the whole thing. And if I may, just everybody pray for me, because, you know, this is an awesome position to be in behind this pulpit. Because this is where God is going to try to give me a message to get to you. He's not going to try. I'm going to try. Praise the Lord. Would you open your Bible, please, to... Acts, 120, uh, Acts 17 and 26. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. What you've done for us today and tonight. Yes, he has. The old devil tried to get me out of this because when there's something really, really loud, I mean like really loud, it seems like it gets into my head and it doesn't want to go anyplace except his hands. Yeah. And I apologize if I hurt anybody's feelings, but it does give me a headache and it's nobody's fault except mine. But God has a way of working it out so that I don't have that headache. Amen. 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 Praise Amen. the Lord. Praise. Give him the praise. Uh, let's see. Page 121 in my Bible. Yeah, I've been studying, but I don't know where everything is. <laughs> Acts 17 and 26. I know all of you know this scripture before I even get to it. And I am so nervous. Ooh. See what Lord I mean? Bless you. Bless you. Acts 17 and 26. The Apostle Paul was talking and he said, He hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all of the face of the earth and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation. Tonight I'd like to say this, that you know, we may not get along sometimes in the carnal mind, but your blood and my blood will mix. Yes. Your blood and my blood rose, flows red through our veins. Right. We have the same uh, ability to transfuse from my blood to right. his blood to right. my baby's blood back here, yes. and we'll get along fine. Yes. And I love the Lord for that because sometimes, you know, we get acquainted with people who think, well, now, I can't have that blood. I, there's a religion that will not allow anybody's blood to be transferred <coughs> from another person. Sure. That will not hurt anybody because God himself made us of one blood. One blood, one blood and one, one human nation. We are in this world. You are my brother. You are my sister, whether we like it or not. Right. We are, are my God's creation. Yes. And he wants us to get along as much as we possibly can. Thank Sometimes you, it's very hard for this old carnal mind to work around some of the things that said or done in our past or God knows our right. future right. for all times in the future. He said he knew our thoughts are far off before we yeah. were even formed right. in our mother's womb. Amen. God knows what we are. He knows where we're going. Yeah. He knows what we're going to be. And, yeah. and he knows what yeah. we're going to say, what we're going to do, yes, and where we're going to be tomorrow. Yes, I don't does. know. I have been so many times wondering, well, where are Brother Jordan, Brother Honey and I are going to be? Well, we're going to be where God wants us to be. Amen. We're going to serve the Lord and we're going to try to worship Him. We're going to try to get along with everybody. Amen. But some people will not allow you to get along with them. Amen. I don't care what you do. Amen. In the book of 1 Corinthians, it is in the third chapter. It says, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God? And that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. In you. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. We go along in this world and we think we're one unto ourselves, but we're not. We are the living temple of God. Yes, we're here on this earth for him to work through 
Jehovah that he might have his will accomplished. Yes, he could call out on the stones and they would cry out. But he made us to worship him and to serve him right. and to do what he would have us to do. That's go it. where he would have us to go. And speak the words that he would have us to say. But let me tell you tonight, we are the living temple of God. We are the living temple of God. Do you see yourself or do you see the temple of God? Yes. Do you see God shining through your countenance? Yes. Or do you see somebody that's going to put on a little paint? My husband yes. told me one time, well, he told the church one time because I had on some lipstick. He said, any old barn would look good with a little bit of paint. But I, maybe that just made me feel so good. I'm a barn. I got only a temple, I'm a barn. <laughs> But God says if you defile the temple, he will de destroy you. We don't go around this life and we pay for our sins. A lot of people say, well, no, God's forgiveness, and he has. But let me tell you, our bodies will pray for our sins. You cannot be an alcoholic and get by without anything happening to you. You will get liver disease. You get other kinds of disease. You smoke cigarettes one after another. Not only do they make you stink, but they will destroy your lungs. They will give you cancer. And people can smell your block of life. The stench of sin tells on itself. Oh, Bless this is hard Lord. on Bless me. <laughs> Brother Marlo, this is hard on me. Bless her, Lord. If we are the temple of God, yes. and He's dwelling in us, then it should behoove us to do exactly what God wants us to do. Amen. We should go where He wants us to go. We should put our arms around the people that we feel that God just, you know, wants us to. Brother um, Rosales was up here a while ago, was being prayed for. You know, and he just, I just had to put my arms around him and tell him, you know, it's not hard to get to repent. It's not hard to ask God to forgive you. Sometimes we make it hard, but it isn't. You go to God with a repentant heart, and you tell him, I'm sorry, Lord. And I've done things, I've said things, I've been here and I've been there for us older people. And believe me, young people, we weren't born with wrinkles and gray hair. So we know exactly what you're going through today. We were there at one time. And we had the feelings that you got today. So when you get to thinking in the back of your mind, Mom and Dad don't know what I'm going through. They don't know what I'm feeling. Remember, we were there at this I, I can remember I was a mother at 16 and I was picking cotton and, and I put my baby on the back of the cotton sack and on the end of it. I pull her down that row while I was picking cotton. I just pick her up and carry her up to the wagon and play it. But you know what? People let other people raise their children today. We don't know what they're being taught in all of these little schools and these little bit home things and everything else. But bless God, mine was a good child. Praise and Lord, Lord, let me keep her until she was 50 years old. Then he decided to take her home. But God has been gracious to me. Brother Marlowe said, praise the Lord in all things, good and bad, and that's true. Amen. You know what? It's hard to put a smile on your face when you're facing your child's death or your husband's death or your wife's death. But let me tell you, when you've got the love of God in your heart, you've got that joy way down deep. It is so deep and within you that you can look at the Satan in the face. And I told him one time, I don't care what you do. You can take every one of my loved ones. You can take everything that I have. But you can't take Jesus away from me. I can give him up, but you can't take him away from me. And I'm not going to let you. Many things that I went through. And one night laying on the floor, I put the mattress down on the floor. And I was laying there and I was praying. And I looked up and I said, God, I'm not as strong as you think I am. One thing right after another has happened, but he said, I am. I am. I am, I am. I am strong. I am. I'll bring you through. I'll get you what you need to do. I will talk to you. I will pray with you. I will lift you up when you're so far down that you have to have a 12-foot ladder to reach bottom. 
but God has always been there. I will not stand here and try to relate the times that I know that he saved my life. And this was before I was a Christian. Because you see, he knew me. Yes. He yes. knew where I was going to be. Yes. Yes. And he knew where yes. I was going to be right yes. now tonight. Yes. He knew where I was going to be talking tonight. Yes. I didn't. I sat yes. back there and I was praising yes. the Lord. And sometimes it looks like I'm not, you know, doing anything. But I am praising the Lord. I'm quiet sometimes, and this is for me sometimes I'm not. But blessing God, I love him tonight. He's brought me through so much. He has tended to me. He's been through so much with me. When I had my triple heart bypass, they thought I was going to die because they had to take my heart completely out of my body to operate on it. My pastor said, what did you see when you were unconscious? And I said, I didn't see anything. This was in 1999. She said, yes, you did. What did you see? Well, what I saw was my father who had passed on in 1984. And he was sitting on nothing, but he was sitting there anyway. <laughs> and he said, get on back. It's not time. Get on back. It's not time. You see, God knows. I don't know, Sister Marlowe. I don't know about it. He knows. I may not even be here. I went down today and checked my blood pressure, and it was so, it was 70 over 40. You can't accuse me of having high blood pressure. <laughs> First Peter 2 and 9. Praise our God. And then I'm going to try to get out of here because I'm so nervous. I'm shaking all over. <laughs> the Bible says you are a chosen generation, and every one of you can quote this, I know. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into marvelous light. You've got royal blood flowing through your veins. Amen. Don't hang your head in front of anybody. Amen. Because you are a child of the living oh, King. Yeah. And you are his prince. Of, you are his princess. Of, and come on, let's show yes. the love of God. Amen. Let's show what he's doing to us. Uh, for us. Uh, <coughs> let's Amen. show what he is in our life. Amen. People may put you down, but you say, I... I am a child of the king. I am a child of the king. I have royal blood flowing through my veins. And remember what we said, we are all of one blood. We may have DNA from a biological mother, but when you have repented and you have received the gift of the Holy Ghost, you have been baptized, you are then a child of the king, and you're going on and you're going forward. Let's go back. We're royalty. We're royalty. Get that in your mind. Money, your royalty. Your princess. Don't let anybody put you down. Amen. I know the young people have a hard way of going today, much harder than I did. But God has been gracious to me. Amen. And I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, if I'm standing here, He loves me. Yes. He loves everybody in this room and everybody on the outside. Yes, yes. I, now, this is not mine. Okay, I heard it on TV. They're trying to change sin into something that isn't sin. Uh -huh. Homosexuals anymore aren't homosexuals. They're gay. They're gay. <laughs> <laughs> They're just having a whole time out there with AIDS, with all the other kinds of diseases that that causes. But we're gay. Boy, praise God, we're gay. And don't think I'm preaching against the gays. I'm preaching against the sin. Yeah. A drunk isn't a drunkard anymore. He has a disease. My, my, my. Praise the Lord. So many things. Adultery isn't adultery anymore. It's cohabitation. It's cohabitation. The world has a way of putting a good slant on sin. But we are children of the King. His blood is flowing through our veins. Amen. 
and we can hold our heads up high, and I don't care how we look or how the other people perceive us to be, we please God. Amen. Amen. I don't care who you are, you're going to make a mistake in this world. I don't care how close you are to God, you will make mistakes. A mistake is not a sin. In my opinion, my humble, oh, I'm so humble. In my humble opinion, a sin is something that you deliberately set out to do. You will lie, cheat, steal. Somebody gives you too much money, they've made a mistake. You keep it, you sin because you stole it. You see, we got to be careful. Satan is very sly. He will catch you up without you even blinking your eye on once. But be careful what you do. Because there are people that I don't care if you get a, make a mistake. They're going to tromp on you. They're going to stomp on you. They will ground your feet on your face into the dirt. Because of mistakes. But you see, God doesn't. Bless the Lord. I, I was praying one day, and I wanted to pray for somebody that was sick. And the Lord brought it to my mind and said, pray for yourself first. Pray for yourself first. Make sure that there's nothing between you and me that would hinder my prayer, your prayer coming to the altar of mercy for that person. Thank you, Father. Because there was yeah. something there. Praise the Lord. I know in St. John, I think it's in the ninth chapter. You probably know where it is. But it says the Lord does not hear the prayer of the sinner. He hears the sinner's prayer, but not the prayers of the sinner. Jesus himself said, I pray not for the world, but I pray for those that God has given me, the Father has given me. And I've been given and I thank God for that. I thank Bless God, for Brother McCants, Brother Honey. And I know there have been times that I, he says I haven't, but I probably embarrassed him. But remember this, when I leave, when you leave, and we'll be leaving here one of these days, I'm 80 years old and won't be home. You are a child of God. You are a prince or you are a princess. Don't let anybody put you down. Amen. You walk the walk and you talk the talk. When you leave this building, that's when your testimony begins. I love to hear the testimonies of God healing people, of God encouraging people, bring them out of accidents, and that's wonderful. It encourages us. Keep on doing it. Jump up and say, I have a testimony. God's done something for me. Amen. But when you leave through those double yes, doors and the other doors out there, that is when your testimony begins. It's how we live our life when we leave this building. It's how other people come to take and wonder who we are and how we are and where we're going. Glory. And we can lift up Jesus. Praise the Lord. We can lift him up Praise the Lord. wherever we Amen. see anybody Amen. that is sick in body. Amen. Pray for them. Amen. Don't wait until you come to church and say, I saw somebody that needs prayer. Pray for them right there. That's when they need it. Yes. But anyway, that's me. Bless the Lord. That's me. Let your testimony, let your light shine as a light set up on the hill for all the world to see. And keep a smile on your face. I don't care who you are. When I was out in sin, I wouldn't have anything to do with a Christian entity that was in the churches that had a sour puss face all the time. That's right. Always complaining Always. about how sick they are. Yes. Oh. Always complaining how down they were. Oh, I've just had so much going on. I just can't hardly make it. We've got the living king Amen. living in us. Right. And he's going to lift us up. He's going to put a smile and he's going to bless us wherever we go if we bless him. And I thank you for that. Yes.